Mind, the shifter and reorganizer of nodes. Introduction. What is matter and what is light? Are they not the same energy being perceived in two different ways, all created by a single motion? Mind, the shifter and reorganizer of nodes, theoretically discusses how our mind's various states influence the natural drifting of energy as it follows along the habitable spiral of perception. There is only now, and the now moment is created by one half past and one half future, all existing within the vortex of time. Consciously, they become layered on top of each other to give us the smooth and easy experience we share. Through space preparation, we see the true shape and nature of our reality. Following the circadian rhythm along our daily orbit through conscious density, and you see it is tuned to various harmonics depending on the time of day, as it mimics a gyroscope hanging on a string at a 90 degree angle. However, it is all in the now. Our wants, don't wants, assumptions, and expectations are in constant vibration, working with the fluid to best synchronize with our projections. It is the synchronization of all beings in the light state that ultimately create our motion and manifested experience. The Vortex of Time All aspects of creation are in a state of motion and in a state of orbit. It is the nature of our existence. The human body orbits the center of the earth, the earth orbits the center of the sun, the sun orbits the center of a galaxy. All those structures orbit the center of all time, with many steps between our universal system and that of the next. However, there is a greatest center of all moments. Our physical experience is directly related to that greatest inertial reference frame. Considering we are human, information exchange is controlled by a factor of the speed of light outward and one time the speed of light inward. We cannot see past the smooth cosmic microwave background, and we cannot see into black holes. This is somewhat illusionary because there is a perception interacting with a field of energy. Einstein's theory of relativity shows us that time dilations and Lorentz contractions ultimately give us the stretching and crunching of a singular fluid to create all experiences. It is all relative. Which universe you will experience and which energy may manifest it is the relative crunching and stretching of a singular fluid that creates your current position and line of sight. A liquid light state prediction. In the liquid light state universe, we calculated a theoretical size for consciousness. There is always a starting point, and so we start here. How big is our consciousness in the now relative to our experience? Let's first examine our physical manifestation in the fifth dimensional vortex after. Perception is based off frame rate, and the human brain takes a picture of reality roughly 60 times in a second. The speed of light is approximately 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. This means that light from your physical body travels 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per conscious snapshot. Let's call this the radius of the conscious now. When you multiply that by 2, you get 1 times 10 to the 7 meters. This implies that the longest standing wave that may exist within our conscious snapshot is 1 times 10 to the 7 meters. Time Atom Prediction The crystal of time shows us that matter and light are first differentiated when acceleration is equal to the speed of light. This is what creates the habitable spiral of perception. It is a harmonic relationship of energy orbiting a black hole determined by A equal to V squared over R. Acceleration is equal to the speed of light, and so the equation may read c equal to v squared over r. Our brains act like an antenna, picking up information based on our maximum conscious harmonic. Every point in our three-dimensional space has a unique light state, meaning each point has a different incoming and outgoing energy and may be seen as the center of a black hole. Essentially, every point in space and time has a unique sphere of orbiting energy that creates it. Time atom puts you in the center of time and shows how your perceived experience or dimension is a direct relationship to the incoming energies that orbit you and the conscious harmonic of your mind. You could say in a physical sense that our consciousness is created by waves consisting of delta to fast gamma. Each of those vibrations would then be tuned to a specific orbital rate and distance. For example, at 1.2 Hz, the delta wave may be considered the longest wave in our experience. When you consider orbital motion of the fifth dimension consisting of light speed acceleration towards center, 
you see that each harmonic manifests, or interacts rather, with a specific field of energy. This is what gives us the table of universe, and implies that our next conscious harmonic will be related to a frequency of 100 to 220 hertz, centered around 160 hertz and 320 hertz to follow. Astronomical significance. Deltaverse may exist in a cloud that orbits our center of time at a radius of 5 times 10 to the 6 meters. Take a moment to really look at what this may imply. We only perceive the now moment which is a creation of scaled waveforms as matter is being crunched in from the fluid and light stretched away. Our physical is illusionary in that nature. The still pencil. In a physical sense, the pencil sitting still on the table is not moving. All we are seeing is the physical now. It is not the true past of the energy creating it or the true future of that flow. In a real sense, it is being manifested blipping in and out of solidity at scales related to the Planck second. It is a focusing, a curling, and an emitting of the fluid as it continues to drift inward. It is in a state of constant manifestation from scaled waveforms that pass through and continue onward. The Table of Universes Understanding that each harmonic is ultimately controlled by an orbit of the fifth dimension, we may now create a table of perceivable universes, and theorize on other energies or flows which may offer us a conscious experience. This also offers us insight into the total field of perceivable experiences for human consciousness. Remember, they are all related to 2 to the n for the noviverse direction, which could be considered denser, and 1 over 2 to the n for the lowerverse direction, which is less dense. One thing to note is that humans have a prime multiplier of 2 related to orbits within time. It may be possible that other complete conscious sets exist, such as 3 to the n, 5 to the n, and so on. These fields would require an extra bit of technology to properly harmonize. Either way, there exist more dense and less dense realms of creation in which we may harmonize. However, how does our conscious now affect the manifesting and manifested realms? How do our postures of mind, body, and spirit influence the past, present, and future. Where do we exist? From our perception, the physical body clearly exists within our dimension. However, when you consider your body throughout all of time, you see that your body is a manifestation of less dense and more dense realms overlapping to create a now moment. It is like the still pencil being manifested into the current position. When looking at this from above, you could be a string of energy that starts from the most outer regions of the lowerverse and spirals inward into our waking universe and then continues onward towards the center of time. Amplitude and Frequency of Thought Forms There are many types of thought forms, and for reasons here, we will break it down into wants, don't wants, assumptions, and expectations. The in the moment, short pacing, for example, getting a glass of water, a kind of I'll just do this real quick kind of thought, would have a higher frequency when compared to a subconscious form relating to assumptions and expectations about the general nature of reality. This is easiest to see by looking at the theory or concept of space preparation. As the now manifests from the light state, there is a crunching effect of the electromagnetic wave. It shows that the future of the light state exists in extremely long waveform. The now exists in the state of matter, the light state just before the now is composed of very short waves but not yet manifested. The easy user interface of the mind, body, and spirit is the shifter or reorganizer of nodes. The once of the now work with the waves that are closer to being manifest. These would be of a very high frequency and almost that of matter. The assumptions and expectations of a lifetime work in the longest of wavelengths. They start reorganizing the light state from the greatest reaches of our consciousness. A Daily Orbit Throughout our day, our bodies naturally follow the rising and setting of the sun. This includes our conscious harmonics. This cycle is known as the circadian rhythm. Let us now map our daily orbit around the center of time so we may gain more insight into the nature of reality. Here is a very simple schedule that outlines the maximum conscious harmonic in relationship to time of day. Let's start from the moment we enter our deltaverse. A circadian rhythm properly tuned to nature will follow us so. From approximately 11.30 p.m. to 2.30 a.m., our primary conscious harmonic is the delta wave. 
From 2.30 a.m. to about 5.30 a.m., we are in theta waves. Then from 5.30 a.m. to 7 a.m., we are in alpha waves. Throughout the day, from 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., we flux from beta to alpha, but are primarily in beta. As we start to wind down, our conscious harmonics start to slow. Then from 7.30 p.m. to about 10.30 p.m., we are in alpha. Then from 10.30 p.m. to 11 p.m., we drop back into theta. The Delta Verse Starting from midnight, we see that our primary conscious harmonic is the delta wave. As morning approaches, our consciousness enters the halfway point between harmonizing with the delta wave versus the theta wave. At this moment, approximately 2.30 a.m. and at a radius of 6 times 10 to the 5 meters is when our antenna switches to the theta state. The theta verse. As conscious tuning follows its natural orbit, it accelerates towards the center of time. At approximately 5.30 a.m., at a distance of 1.5 times 10 to the 5 meters, our orbit falls into the halfway point between the theta and the alpha. This is the moment when our antenna switches from theta to alpha. The alpha verse. Soon after, at approximately 7 a.m., our conscious density then reaches the beta state, which occurs at 37,500 meters from center. The beta verse. It seems for the next 12 hours, from 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., we are in a tight elliptical orbit that passes us through the beta and alpha several times throughout the day. Then at approximately 7.30 p.m., it is as if we have a gravitational slingshot towards the outer edge. This causes us to pass back through the theta state rather quick as we once again enter the delta range. Our orbit then starts again. It is also possible our conscious antenna orbits along the boundary line between alpha and beta, and that actions that require more cognitive capability are what trigger the switching between alpha and beta throughout the day. The Habitable Spiral of Perception Considering our now moment in the wake state is a result of inward drifting energy in combination with our alpha and beta state, you'd see that before energy interacts with our awake state, it first interacts with all the realms of the lower verse. The first conscious harmonic to interact with the fluid would be your delta wave. The second harmonic that may interact would be the theta. Tidal Locking of Conscious Spheres All energy that creates the body is synchronized in such a fashion to manifest. When you consider the natural manifestation of consciousness, it seems to follow an orbit related to the precession of a gyroscope hanging on a string at a 90 degree angle. In essence, our perception is being dipped into a fluid and then undergoes precession as the fluid spirals through. All orbits have influence on our experience. The poles and pushes of the Nobiverse realm are also apparent, and we will speak on this in a later section. For now, let's stay focused on our typical conscious modes, which are the delta, theta, alpha, and beta. This shows that at the 2.5 Hz rotation of the delta wave may be related to a 24-hour orbit within the fluid. The 5 Hz of theta may be related to a 12-hour orbit, the 10 Hz of alpha would be related to a 6-hour orbit, and beta would be related to a 3-hour orbit. When you map the orbits of the 5th dimensional spheres, you notice something peculiar. It seems as if our center of influence is related to the center of mass of these 5th dimensional spheres. For example, starting at midnight, you could say that all the spheres are on the left side of the image. Then, throughout the day, the spheres all orbit at their tidally locked rates. What you notice is that the only difference between midnight and noon is the sphere related to the delta wave. The only difference between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. is, again, the sphere related to the delta wave. This basically shows that our entire conscious experience is somewhat related to the orbiting of these fifth dimensional tidally locked spheres and that they cause our gyroscopic precession. When you expand this outward and inward to include the dimensions of the lower verse and noviverse, you see that more alignments exist within this tidally locked fluid. Great processions relating to dimensional alignments emerge. <laughs>